The question is, if the tzaddikim were so scared of Genom, Kafakela, all these different things, you know, whether it's David Melech or Moshe Rabbeinu or tzaddikim from recent generations like Rav Steinemann, Ravadia, all these different tzaddikim were very, very scared of Genom. What do we do for ourselves since we're not even the dust under their feet? First and foremost, we have to understand that the Kadosh Baruch Hu measures each person based on their level. And when it comes to the tzaddikim, it's the Chut HaSa'ara, the measures them to the smallest, smallest thing. Why? Because the more a person knows about something, the, the more uh, is expected from him. For example, if you're a, uh, a uh, somebody that's just starting to learn medicine, you're going to medical school and you mess up, you break something, you even hurt somebody, you're not going to be charged and accused of negligence in the same capacity as somebody that has 30 years experience. Why? Because you're not in that same level. Same thing with every other profession. If you're a trainee in a law, law office or you're just starting out in a uh, investment firm or anything else, when you're first starting out, you're not judged the same way as somebody that has been there for a very long time. So, where, you know, whereas if somebody has been there for a long time, you know, does makes rookie mistakes, then of course he could uh, lose their uh, lose their job and uh, potentially even get sued and so on and so forth. Same concept when it comes to the tzaddikim versus us. They have spent their life knowing more and more about Hashem, and therefore their judgment is much more detailed. But at the same token, their reward is much more extraordinary. So there, there's a everything is a zeke negetze barai looking. who built everything with a, uh, two different sides. There's evil, there's uh, good, there is uh, tall, there's short, there's dark, there's night, light, and so on and so forth. And the same concept is when reward and punishment. So just like their reward is much more extraordinary and their blessings are much more valued and their Abudat Hashem is much more significant and so on and so forth. The reality is is that there's much more expected from them. So you say, yeah, well, I'd rather not have the uh, this much expected for me and, and therefore I'll be better off, so I shouldn't be a tzaddik. Wrong. Why? <laughs> the only reason why you're, you know, a person thinks that is because they don't understand the, the pleasure that a person gets by being a tzaddik, not just in the uh, reward that they get, after this life, but during their life, the uh, the permanent closeness and dveku to Hakadosh Baruch Hu is a feeling like no other. When a person wakes up in the morning and they're simply happy to serve Hakadosh Baruch Hu to the fullest potential, when they have a sense of accomplishment, they have a sense of urgency to do all of this, and they have a sense of accomplishment each day that they have done something to serve Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and that is what gives them pleasure. That is much greater pleasure than any person could ever get from their material needs, whether it's a uh, you know their job or or, or uh, you know some type of money or some type of honor that they get somewhere else. They're never going to get the same type of pleasure that a tzaddik gets when he serves Hashem at the highest potential. It's simply not possible. So while the tzaddik may be measured uh, differently than a person that's a mediocre person. The, the pleasure and the reward for the tzaddik is extraordinarily high. So, and it's obviously worth it. Now, as far as the, uh, the judgment that each person gets, yeah, a person has to understand that they're judged based on where they are, what kind of abilities Hashem gave them. So it says that uh, Moshe and Aaron were equals, but everybody knows that there was no Navi like Moshe. So how come they were equals? They were equals in a sense that based on the gifts that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave each one of them, they both filled their full potential. They both reached their full potential, fullest potential that's possible for them. So although there is no Navi that is quite like Moshe Rabbeinu or even close to Moshe Rabbeinu, including his brother, it constantly says that Moshe and Aaron were, were equals. Or it says that Shmuel is like Moshe and Aaron. It doesn't mean that Shmuel was as great of a prophet as Moshe Rabbeinu or as righteous as Moshe Rabbeinu, but rather he reached the fullest potential, fullest potential. So that's, that's in essence where he was. So when, uh, you know, they, they were talking to Rabbi Zusha uh, Minapoli many, many years ago, Rabbi Zusha Minapoli was uh, in essence self-rebuking, you know, saying, Rabbi Zusha, why, why are you, what, what's going on? He says, I know that when I go up to Shemaim, they're not going to ask me, Zusha, Zusha, why weren't you Moshe Rabbeinu? Zusha, Zusha. Why weren't you Rabbi Akiva? They're not going to ask me that. The only thing they're going to ask me in Shemaim is Zusha. How come you weren't Zusha? Meaning, how come you didn't reach your fullest potential? So a person doesn't have to worry about the gifts 
that Moshe Rabbeinu has, the tikkunim that Yaakov Avinu had, the difficulties of Avraham Avinu. He doesn't have to worry about these things because that's not his tests. He wouldn't be able to pass those tests. He also doesn't have to worry about the test that his friend has, uh, whether it's uh, having a wife that's a bad one or not having a wife or having kids or not having a job or this. He doesn't have to worry about other people's tests. The only thing that a person needs to focus on is his own, his own test, his own gifts, his own difficulties. If a Kadosh Baruch Hu gave you a gift, one of your obligations is to learn how to use that gift, that ability to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Whether it's a gift that's a artistic gift, or it's a gift where you have the ability to make, uh, you know, money, or it's a gift where you have the ability to speak, or whatever it is, whatever tool Hashem gave you, you have to learn how to serve Hashem with that gift. He didn't give you that tool just for, uh, you know, just to to make the the world diverse. He gave you that gift in order for you to serve Hashem. So that's one thing. The second thing is is that you don't have to worry about everybody else's test. You have to worry about your tests. So a person that is focused on is Abu Hashem is not going to be concerned about why he's not this or he's not that. The only thing he should be concerned with is, is he or she filling their potential, fulfilling their potential with the abilities that Hashem gave them. And everybody knows the truth. Everybody knows where they stand in reality. And we can't live an illusion. A lot of people live an illusion where they, you know, one day they're uh, barely, uh, you know, able to fulfill the mitzvah. The next day they're telling you, yeah, no, I'm listen, I'm uh, doing uh, some yichud with Hashem. And they're going to some park and, uh, and, and thinking that they're doing yichud with Hashem. You know, everybody has to stop living a delusional life and realize that you have a ability, you have a test, you have a job, you have a mission and you have to fulfill it to the fullest potential, day in, day out. When a person fulfilled his potential, when a person put everything on that field and, and he did everything and she did everything that she could possibly do and he did everything he could possibly do to serve Hashem, you'll know it. Why do you know it? Because you will feel the same way that Sadiq feels when he serves Hashem to the highest potential. And then when you have that feeling, you'll know why on one end you shouldn't be worried about Gehenom, but on the other end you should be. Why? Because we're not doing that every day. So the more we serve Hashem, better the more we realize how much we can do. Because if we were able to do everything possible every single day, we would never have this feeling of something missing. So the, the, the way to know whether you're serving Hashem to the highest potential or not is when you have real true simcha from your Avodot Hashem. And that's something that is hard work. It's hard work, but when a person does it, it's worth it. So don't worry about everybody else's test. Don't worry about everybody else's judgment. Worry about what you can do and how you do it best. And Bezat Hashem, you will succeed. Call to Bechavat Zachar.